that, that was Han, hand man. He said, throw that punch at me now. Jim, watch how I throw my head. I, I, I'm a, I can do stunts too. Watch me. So Han was supposed to throw a, like a, a light cross. Boom. And Bruce said, okay, throw it now. So Han went, bam, through the right cross, man, and caught Bruce on the chin, right here, on the lip. Split his lip, blood went flying. By accident, you know, it was an accident. Accidents happened. As his fame grew, so did the pressures of stardom. Lee was a recreational cannabis user since his days in Hollywood. But as stress grew, so did his use of marijuana and hashish. I just know that Bruce also, outside of the film business, uh, he was under incredible pressure. He was constantly, not constantly, but he, he, had, he told me people just wanted to challenge him in the streets. And um, he was always watching his back. And I think at one point, it came to the point where Bruce was carrying a gun. On May the 10th, 1973, Lee suffered a major setback. We were helping Bruce Lee duck enter the dragon. We had just broken for lunch, when we heard someone shouting from the upstairs toilet. We then ran up to see what was wrong. We saw a body lying outside the toilet door, and it was Bruce Lee. We tried to bring him around, then carry him into the dumping room and place him on the sofa. I remember his mouth was chattering up and down as though he was experiencing an epileptic fit. So the sound mixer placed a metal spoon in his mouth. And then the producer came and took him to hospital. On the uh, evening of May 10th, somewhere after 5 o'clock, after I'd finished my afternoon uh, uh, clinic, uh, I received a call that someone was being brought in from Golden Harvest and that it had something to do with Bruce Lee. On arrival, in fact, it was Bruce himself. He was brought in by uh, several men who were carrying him without a stretcher. He was deposited on the examination table in the emergency room, and they quickly made an exit. We had one nurse who was assigned to the emergency room, and she was to call other help as needed. It became obvious right away that because Bruce was so ill that my help was quite frightened, and they absented themselves as quickly as they could. Uh, Bruce's situation was one that appeared to be uh, quite serious. He had uh, very irregular respiration. He was perspiring profusely. Uh, his color was not good. He was alternatingly flaccidly uh, unresponsive and uh, then some rigidity. There was occasionally some stiffness of his neck. His pupils did not react as they should. And uh, he literally looked like uh, a dead person. Uh, because I saw that I was going to have difficulty getting sufficient assistance, uh, I called, uh, I had the hospital switchboard call for some of the people who helped me with anesthesia. Dr. Cecilia Wong, a very uh, well-trained uh, uh, anesthesiologist uh, responded, came in. We moved an anesthesia machine uh, from the uh, surgery suite on the floor above. In the meantime, I'd been using an Ambu bag, an emergency device to assist with respiration. We actually placed a tube in Bruce's uh, windpipe or trachea to assist with the respiration better and to prevent him vomiting into his uh, windpipe. Uh, we got an IV going, uh, put a stomach tube down to evacuate stomach contents, and uh, in the meantime, assessed him as having something going on inside his head. Because uh, southern-born Chinese, and particularly Hong Kong Chinese, have a reported high incidence of abnormalities of the blood vessels in the brain, and because of the, what we knew of the history of his collapse, we thought that was what was happening. A uh, decision was made to give mannitol, a drug which shrinks the brain but causes tremendous urine output. Uh, a catheter was placed in the bladder to take care of that, and as the mannitol was given, Bruce began to improve a great deal. A contact had been made with Dr. Peter Wu, a neurosurgeon with whom uh, uh, Dr. Wong worked frequently, and a man to whom I referred patients and who had cared for me as a patient previously. And uh, Dr. Wu uh, concurred in that decision and eventually received Bruce when we moved him from Baptist to St. Teresa's. 
uh, Baptist Hospital had no available beds, and we felt that uh, Bruce needed to be in a place where he could get intensive nursing care. And I went with him in the ambulance, still resuscitating him uh, with the uh, anesthesia machine as we moved him to St. Teresa's. By this time, he was very much improved after he had struggled and resisted us in a discoordinated way as we were working on him. And he was received uh, in the emergency facilities at St. Teresa's, and then from that point, Dr. Wu took over his care. He was brought in unconscious. He was in coma, and he was uh, having a fit. And uh, was brought into the hospital in really a quite a serious situation. From um, what we gather is um, caused by cerebral edema, the swelling of the brain. So we were assembled and, uh, there, and we did some resuscitation for him. And uh, he was very lucky. The next day, uh, he regained his consciousness completely, and uh, he was able to relate to us uh, what happened that day. So as a matter of fact, uh, what uh, he told me was that um, while he was taping uh, for the film, uh, he chewed a couple of uh, uh, leaves uh, which he had been given by somebody else. And uh, this was a uh, hashish leaf. And um, so he had a severe nausea and vomiting. And then he lapsed into coma while he was vomiting. And, uh, and uh, we did obtain a, a specimen from his vomitus, in, uh, which discovered the uh, a quantity of uh, hashish. So <clears throat> our diagnosis was that uh, he had the poverty and overdose of this this stuff, or he may be unusually sensitive to this stuff, and that was the cause of his trouble. So we had given him a warning before he was discharged from the hospital, saying that um, <clears throat> he was very lucky. Uh, it happened that uh, we were there at a time when he was in critical conditions. We were there to be able to do something about it. And uh, had he not, no medical attention had been available, he would have been dead. Bruce left Hong Kong soon thereafter, uh, and as I understand it, went to the West Coast to seek further medical opinion. And uh, I did not see him uh, related to that illness uh, thereafter. Bruce had a follow physical checkup in the States. And the doctor responsible for his checkup told him that he was a man in the 20s, his physical fitness was such that he was still a man in his 20s. So I think Bruce must be fully convinced by then that he was invincible. You know, he was really in his perpetual youth. That was probably what brought him down, I think. Enter the Dragon now completed, Lee returned to work on Game of Death. There's a movie he did with a basketball player, Game of Death, and he was going to finish it with me. And he wasn't going to kill me off, it was about different levels, and we're talking about spirituality and different levels of, uh, of uh, awareness as you get to the higher levels in this temple he had built. And I think he'd done the first two levels or something at the time, we were going higher. Taiwanese sex symbol Betty Ting Pei was to play opposite Lee. I ran into Bruce, his wife and Raymond Chow, in front of the hotel. Introductions were given by Raymond, and this was the very first time we met. He was telling me at the time, which I got to admit I didn't take much notice of, he was getting headaches. And I was saying, God, you look healthy. I mean, I haven't seen anybody look healthier than you. And I just dismissed it. And then the second time he told me, was in um, a restaurant, Japanese restaurant, the night before uh, I was leaving. So I'll have dinner with you tomorrow night. I said, he said, look, if you're not feeling well, 
don't worry about it, and I'll see you when I get back from London. I was going to London, my wife was going to have a baby, and I was going to come back and do the movie. He said, no, no, I said I'll have dinner with you, so I'll be there. He visited my home to discuss the screenplay for Game of Death, which was to star us both. But that uh, evening, I was with Raymond Chow, who was uh, the head of Gawa, the Golden Harvest, with Bruce, and Bruce was the main partner, and Raymond was uh, like 50-50 almost. And uh, Raymond and I were sitting there staring at each other with not much to say, and, and I said, where's Bruce? He said, I should be here. I said, well, call him. Let's see what's happened to him. So he said, I know where he is. He's not, he's not uh, at home. He's with this other woman. Bruce said he was experiencing a...